Hi, I'm Medios from Cloud9, and this is my basic champion guide for Nocturne. Nocturne is pretty good in solo queue. He farms well and has pretty potent ganks once he has his ultimate. So he scales well, farms well, and ganks well. He's pretty strong. The only issue is that he doesn't have the most early game pressure pre-6, so if your laners get extremely behind, he can be quite hard to come back on. He's not the best comeback champion just because he doesn't have a lot of utility. He's really just damage, and he has to get in there to do it. For Nocturne on the blue side, you generally want to start at Gromp so that your bot lane can take the Krugs. After Gromp, go to blue, and then from blue, go to your red. Once you have red in level 3, you can look for a gank if bot or mid is overextended. If they're not, you should continue farming and try to work towards your first item. For Nocturne on the purple side, it's basically the same thing but flipped. You start at Krugs on the top side and then work your way down to red, followed by blue. Once you have double buff in level 3, you can look to gank mid or bot, or take the crab. For playstyle on Nocturne, he's more farm heavy than most junglers because he doesn't do a lot without his ultimate, so generally you just want to be clearing your camps while your ultimate's down, and then when you have your ult, you want to look for ganks. Mostly you want to look for ganks that are high impact, so ganks around Dragon where you can take an objective afterwards because if you just get one cleanup kill with your Nocturne ult, it's not as effective as if you can get it in a big skirmish where you can get a few kills and maybe a tower or so. So look to use your ultimate to get the most value is possible out of it. Aside from that, you can gank without it, but he doesn't really have much mobility otherwise, so you gotta be careful when your ultimate is down. For ganking on Nocturne, without his ultimate, he doesn't have a whole lot. Best you can do is walking up behind someone and then trying to hit them with your Q, which gives you move speed. When you use your E on someone, you want to try to get as close as possible when you start your E, because if they're faster than you and you start at max range, they'll walk out of it immediately. But if you're right on top of them and you use it, sometimes even if they flash, you can still keep the fear tether going. There's one trick with Nocturne that if you flash within a quarter second of when they flash, even if they got out of range for the tether, it'll still stay connected for a quarter second after they get out of range. So it's one trick you can do. Usually you have to anticipate them doing it. It's hard to react to that fast. But if you know you can get them if the fear goes off, a lot of times it's good to flash right when they flash so that you keep the tether going. Keep playing on Nocturne is pretty dependent on how you built him. If you went damage, you want to wait until the fight starts and then jump in on their carries. If you're a tank Nocturne, you can do a bit more initiating. Generally what you want to do, I play tank Nocturne more often, so when the fight starts, you want to jump on the priority targets and usually hit him with your Q and then E and chase him around. Tank Nocturne does have enough damage to kill people, but usually what happens when you jump in is you get focused really hard and you'll have to back out. Try to use your W on the crowd controller most impactful abilities so that you can avoid it. And if you have randoms, try to use it to slow as much of their team as possible and just be disruptive. Team fights are best on Nocturne around Dragon and Baron Pit or in the jungles where there's a lot of bushes because when you use your ultimate, the enemy team loses vision of each other and their wards. So if someone's in a bush or next to a bush, their line of sight gets really messed up. So you can create a lot of confusion for the enemy team, especially in solo queue, by using your ultimate in those areas. Nocturne's not the best at counter jungling, just because he has no mobility, so if he gets caught in the enemy jungle, he can get killed. And not just by the enemy jungler, usually the enemy laners can get to you before your own laner, so I don't like counter jungling too much on Nocturne unless you have a lane that's extremely ahead that can back you up, or you know the jungler's not going to come fight you. For runes on Nocturne, I use attack damage reds, armor yellows, cooldown introduction blues, and attack speed quints. For masteries on Nocturne, I take 21 9, taking 4 points into cooldown introduction and offense to try to reduce his very long ultimate cooldown by a bit. For skills on Nocturne, I take Q at level 1, W at level 2, E at level 3, then I max Q followed by E and W last. For items on Nocturne, there are two ways you can build them, either tank or damage. It's better to go tank if you have no other tanks on your team or protection for yourself because a lot of times you'll get focused when you go in. If you have a tank on your team, like Maokai or protection like Lulu, it's okay to go damage, especially if the other team doesn't have much peel. If you're going tank, it's best to go Cinder Hulk followed by other tanky items like Randuin is extremely good, Merc Treasure Ninja Tabby depending on how much CC they have, and I usually pick up a Spectre Scalish and the Banshees later. For damage on Nocturne, it's best to go Warrior, followed by Blade of the Rune King, and then Yomu's Ghost Blade. Thanks for watching my basic champion guide for Nocturne. Be sure to check out the rest of my guides at lawclass.com.